Let's make this film frame edit from scratch in Photoshop. So first what you wanna do is go to unsplash.com, type in something like film frame or Kodak or film border. And there's a lot of options you can choose from until you find a photo of your liking. We're just looking for a nice border to frame our own photo. And then we're gonna bring it into Photoshop, take out the original image and add our own photo within the frame that we've grabbed from that Unsplash photo. So let's open up a new document in Photoshop. Let's go with our 1080 by 1350 dimensions. You might've found an image that fits other dimensions better, but this one that I grabbed is definitely vertically formatted. So you can see it almost fills up the frame perfectly. Just gonna expand out these edges. So we're just getting it over the edge. So now we wanna mask out this area of the image. You can do that with the quick selection tool. You can use the pen tool if that's what you prefer. Any way you normally make a selection, go ahead and do it. So I'm gonna use the quick selection tool by hitting W on my keyboard and then just drawing on this main image. So we're keeping the border out of the selection and we're just selecting the part that we wanna replace. So let's go up to select and mask and we'll add a smart radius so it can detect the edges, it cleans things up a bit. And maybe we'll add a bit of smoothing, some contrast perhaps, and we can always shift the edge down just to remove any outline on the edge. So we'll output this to a layer mask and now we have just the masked out image. So what we wanna do from here is let's make a new folder by clicking our folder icon and then take this mask and just click and drag it up to the folder. So we're gonna put it on this group one folder which we can rename to image or photo, foot, photo. So now whatever we drop in this photo folder, it's gonna be masked out automatically by the mask we just created. So I'm gonna drag in our photo this is Jason Valley from Championship Weekend. And you'll see it didn't mask right away because it dropped in above the photo folder. So let's make sure it's in our folder. And now you can see we have our film frame around it. And you can see like the edges aren't perfectly clean. You can go back into this mask and like take your brush tool, basically taking a, a white brush and like color in these edges. I'm gonna switch the hardness all the way to 100. And you can like go through this way. You could also just like blow the image up if it's just minor adjustments you're making. But also a trick when you're using the brush tool, if you click on one point and then hold shift and click on another, it drags a straight line from point A to point B. So I'm just doing that going over this edge and that looks good. You can fine tune your edges better than I'm doing it in this video. But now that we've got the photo dragged in there, let's talk about some basic effects you can do. I think there's a lot of videos existing on YouTube currently that'll go through specific film type of filters you can create. Feel free to follow one of those tutorials. I'll just go through some ideas you might wanna try. There's no one way to do this, to edit your photo so it looks like film. I've seen a lot of different things out there and they all look good. So let's start with going to our curves layer. This is gonna kind of be the basis of how we do our coloring. So going to the different channels, like the red channel, generally film tends to skew towards like the green and blue in the shadows. So red, if you take the red channel and bring down the low points, you'll notice the cyan coming more into this, into the darker parts of the image, and then you can drag up to make sure it's just isolating those spots. You can kind of just create this S curve on some of these. So the green, we wanna bump the green in the dark parts of the image. So again, I'm clicking towards the bottom of this curves layer, lifting it up to increase the green, and then we'll take the rest of it and bring it back down. And we can also set this blend mode to color so it's not affecting any of the luminosity, like the brightness or darkness. It's just messing with the color. So let's stick with that for some initial coloring. You can also go down to your adjustment layers and if you go to color lookup, there are a few different Kodak filters. So you can see that's like Fuji Eterna 250D Kodak 2395. This is kind of a cool look so you can scroll through these and see if there's anything you like. This one's not bad. So I'm gonna 
lower the opacity of this effect, maybe to 50%. So now we've gone from that to that. Let's group our filters into a folder as well, just so we can quickly show before and after through these steps. Next, I'm gonna desaturate things a little bit just by dragging in another adjustment layer. Hue and saturation, let's drop this down just a little bit. Sometimes you can get pretty vibrant stuff out of a film camera, but other times it is more desaturated and there's less color overall. So we're going with that second line of thinking for this filter. So we'll leave our coloring changes there for now. Another thing you can do is add blur to your photo just a little bit. I think there's oftentimes some kind of camera shake or it's not gonna be a perfectly sharp photo when you're shooting film. So going up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, let's just add a radius of one pixel. I mean, you can, you can adjust this and obviously this would be too much, but something like one pixel, you can see it just softens everything. Nothing is so sharp anymore, which is kind of a cool effect. And then on top of that, if you wanted to simulate some like inadvertent camera shake when they were taking this photo, you can duplicate your photo layer, command J, and then we can take off this Gaussian blur and instead let's go up to filter, blur, motion blur. And you're just gonna wanna add something subtle. So, you know, pick an angle, this feels fine. Don't want too much distance, but maybe like 30 pixels in this case. And then if we switch this blend mode of our motion blur layer to lighten, you'll see it just kind of gives this like glow, this dreamy glow camera shake effect to the whole thing. And we can reduce the opacity of that effect as well. So it's something more subtle. So something like that looks pretty good to me. And I feel like the whole image is still a little bright. Maybe it doesn't match the darkness of our frame border. So let's go back into our filter and let's add a curves layer. And just the, the default curves layer here. I'm dragging it down from the middle. I'm going to reduce this top point as well. So we're just kind of giving it a bit of a faded, more muted look. So again, before and after our filters, we had this, then we went to this. The last thing we can add is some noise. So going to our original photo, if you go up to filter, noise, add noise, and again, you're gonna wanna keep this relatively subtle. You don't wanna like crank this up too much, but you know, something like probably 10%, maybe 9% feels about right. So you are getting some, some noisy detail in the image, which would make sense if this was shot at night. Low light conditions generally mean more noise. So that helps sell this effect of a film photo even more. And again, this is just one way you can go about editing your photo to make it feel like a film photo. Definitely would recommend checking out other tutorials, see how other people go about doing it. But the general point of this video was showing you how to grab a film frame and then edit your photo to make it fit the best you can.